Hello beautiful, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another new makeup releases. We are going to chat about the new makeup that's been released and now it's a sneak peek. And I do have my pepper Kaisa here. She's a little cuddly. <laughs> We are in the new space. I'm back. I took a little bit of a vacation during Christmas, during holidays. I needed to take some time off. I needed to decompress, detox from the internet. You're so very sweet. Are you supposed to be here? But I'm back. I haven't been uploading. Well, I uploaded some pre film videos during Christmas and New Year's, but I'm officially back. My background is not done i just put some stuff up i'm in the middle of moving we're in a new space so if everything is off if the lighting is off if the sound is off anything like that it's because it's a new space i'm doing the best i can this is the first day that i'm filming here i did film this look and it's gonna be live uh, on monday i feel like i'm really off i don't know what i'm doing but i think that's the best thing about vacation if you take a vacation if you do not come back the first day of work and think what is my what is my tasks again? Like, what am I supposed to do here? If you're not feeling that, your vacation wasn't long enough. And I feel like that. Like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. But we are going to be talking about the new makeup. And I'm going to have a video on Monday as well, where I'm going to be chatting about, like, some changes that I'm making to my channel. 2024, doing this makeup look right here. So if anything of that sounds interesting, don't forget to check back on Monday as well. I am going to scoochie scoochie. But I need to move little Kaisa Baisa first. Hmm? I need to move you first. Okay, I'm gonna cuddle with my dog. I'm gonna scooch to the side and we can talk about the makeup. Okay, Kaisa is still here, but hopefully we'll be able to talk a little bit about the makeup news that's been happening while I've been gone. It's been crazy bananas. I have so many things. I don't know if I'll be able to talk about all of them, but I will touch on the ones that I feel are the most interesting let me actually start to talking about the one thing that was actually like released and now sneak everything happened while i was off on vacation and i actually ended up buying this one myself and that is the new collection well mini collection by natasha denona this is the natasha denona uh, it's the my mini dream collection and it is a dream mini blush and a dream mini palette when i first saw this palette i was like this feels so much more like the I need a nude palette than the dream one because I feel like the the well I haven't really compared them though and I have them here so I want to do like a full face of trying new makeup I think I will be including because I bought the blush and I bought the uh, eyeshadow palette I bought it from Natasha Nona website you can use my code and you'll get 15% off when you're buying from the website you can also buy it I think it's Sephora and Ulta I'm not 100% sure but I will link a couple of places down below in case you're interested but if you buy it from Natasha Nona website you'll get some money off which is pretty pretty nice to be honest but yeah I was intrigued to be trying these out not because I think that these colors in the mini palette are like oh my god these are so up my alley it's more that I love the Natasha Denona formula, and I feel like that blush, it is a glow blush, mini dream glow blush. I think that looks cool, and I think that this will be a nicer way for me to enjoy a pink blush, because I don't like on me. And I think that like when I wear them, people are like, no, it looks so good. Those like cool toned, super bright, almost neon pinks, not my journey not my journey this though that is a little bit more muted and has a little sheen to it i think it could be about this for sure so i will be including this in an upcoming video i do have them if i mean these arrived when i was off on vacation so i would have done a dedicated video had i not been on vacation but it's one of my goals for 2024 and i will talk about that in monday's video is to be less stressed about work okay let's just I will include this. I think so far they look cute. I saw them in real life, like I said. They look nice. Is this my dream? No. But the blush? Maybe. This is also something that I actually received in PR while I was gone. And this is the Van uh, Cherry Vanilla Collection by Lawless Beauty. I did get this in PR. And I already have... I think they already had... I feel like... Yeah, because it is the Cherry Vanilla um forget the filler plump gloss that's the one i have and it's always staying by my computer and i'm almost out of it if you saw my lip declutter you would have seen that it is a gloss that i use on a daily i have less than a fourth left of it it is almost done i really really love it and they're expanding the series and i love a sheer red lip i think it's so pretty so this is the forget the filler tinted balm stick i think that's the new one and I don't know if they had 
because now they have the big size of the glass which they didn't have before, and they have the bomb stick, which they didn't have before, and I actually like the bomb stick. It is more like a, yeah, it's like a stick. It's not that goopy, like, gloss stick. It is a bomb. I actually kind of enjoy that, but I feel like this is the color that I had before. But I'm excited to try the bomb stick, because, like I said, I do have that PR package downstairs, and it is, well, it's already available. I will link it down below. Like I said, this smells nice. I love the Lawless lip products. They're really, really nice. The only lip product from Lawless that I didn't like was the lip liner. Because I feel like the lip liner, uh, it doesn't set down. So for me, it's more of a lip crayon. Another thing that I thought I was going to get, but I haven't... Okay. Let me rephrase. I got shipping notification for the ColourPop Multi-Chrome BFF Cream Gel Liners, and it says my package has been delivered, but it's not at my old address and it's not at my new address. So I think there's been some kind of a mix up with my addresses when I'm moving, which happens. So unless they show up, I'm, I think I'm going to wait until the end of the week. If they haven't showed up, I'm going to buy these myself because these are multi-chrome liners from Colourpop and I actually really like the BFF gel liners and I do have a code with Colourpop as well and you can save some money when you're ordering from them and I will be buying these because I think they look nice unless they show up. Like, I don't mind not getting things in PR. I'll just buy them myself. But with this one, since I got shipping notification, I just want to make sure that I'm not getting doubles. On the other hand, if I'm getting doubles, I can just include it in an upcoming giveaway because we are getting so close to the 300 episode. 300 episodes of new makeup releases. And I will, of course, be having a giveaway. I've already saved up some stuff for the giveaway. I sent out all of the boxes, of course, before I went on vacation for the Christmas giveaway. And I'm so happy to see people receive their stuff. It's so much fun. I was so stressed getting all of that out, but I will be having a nice giveaway for a 300 episode as well. And maybe I will be. Is there something? Throwing it out there. Is there something that you would like me to include? That's actually possible. <laughs> Be reasonable, be reasonable. Is it something that you would like to see included? Let me know down below. I don't want to say anything's possible, but I'm definitely open for suggestions because we are definitely having a giveaway when the 300 episode is coming. And yeah, if I don't get these in BR before the end of the week, I will be making a Colourpop order and I will buy these because like, why not? They seem super cool and I want to try them out and see if they're any good. I didn't love the liquid multi-chrome from Colourpop, so I want to see if they made the pens better. They also released a palette, which I did not receive should i pick this one up too do you want to see my thoughts on it this is the golden hour no it's not the stay golden palette uh, close enough <laughs> close enough this is a 16 pan palette and i will say i have really enjoyed the 16 pan palettes that i've tried from color pop and this is why i'm like should i try this one do you want to say like a trying new let me know Again, I am open for suggestions. Please let me know what you think. Because for me, and maybe I should say this because you'll probably look at this and you're like, this is a neutral palette. You don't like neutrals. I like browns with yellow and I feel like this could be that. And I kind of want to compare this one to the C3PO palette, which is my probably my favorite neutral palette from ColourPop and see like, is this that? Like an extension of that? Let me know what you think. Again, I'm open for suggestions. I actually think that this is a fairly well curated palette from ColourPop and I haven't at least seen exactly this before, at least not the last like year or two. So yeah, let me know what you think about that. I will say I'm really enjoying seeing ColourPop slow down the releases. The last half of 2023 was actually kind of chill <laughs> for ColourPop standards. Oh, let's talk about the new Morpheus wall. I'm in a way, I'm like, oh, I can't believe Morphe is releasing something new. But in a way, I'm kind of excited for them that they're not just like crashing and burning and disappearing. And like, I don't know, having a, a way of like trying to come back. I don't know if this is going to be the comeback for them, though. I'm not going to buy this one. Main reason being that I don't love super large palettes. I'm not against trying Morphe again in the future, but this will not be the palette, even though I like that it's colorful. I feel like if this had been a 16 pan palette, I would have been more on board because I like the idea of like pink, pastel yellow with blues and purples. I don't hate that idea at all. I actually kind of like it, but it didn't need to be one of these big palettes. Are these big palettes still like the best sellers of Morphe? What do you think? Because they keep releasing them and it has to be because they're selling really good. Or is it just because they're so stuck in their ways? 
Are you still super intrigued by these big palettes? Do you think it's like, oh, so much value for my money? Because for me, when I see a big palette like this, it has to be either a brand that I absolutely love so that I'm like, I can be, forgive them for making big palettes or a color story that I just feel like I cannot live without. If it's neither of those, it's easier for me to say no because a big palette is actually kind of a something that I try to avoid. I feel like this was pretty big news as well and that is that Charlotte Tilbury is coming to Ulta. We did talk about in my episode that I had before Christmas that uh, Sol de Janeiro is coming to Ulta but it seems like Charlotte Tilbury is coming to Ulta as well. It says that it's coming in February so you have to wait another month. I actually think that this will be a big deal. Charlotte Tilbury is a brand that is pretty hyped. Uh, it is a brand that's selling pretty good. Like the brand is pretty well loved through pretty much every age throughout social media. You see the tweens loving it. You see uh, people my age and older loving it. Uh, I don't love the eyeshadow products per se, but I feel like it's a brand where even though it's pretty expensive, a lot of people seem to really love it. Not everybody, of course. A lot of people feel like it's not worth the hype. I personally feel like a lot of her products are actually worth the hype. That's just my personal opinion. But I also feel like if you think that it's too expensive, if you think that like I could never pay that for a highlighter, then it's not going to be worth it. And I think that that's important to keep in mind when you're buying luxury or high-end products. If you already going into it, feel like this cannot possibly be worth the price. It's too much money. Then just you probably are going to be disappointed because at the end of the day, it is only makeup. But I am excited to see and I'm also excited to see if there's going to be... Because I feel like some brands have been having some Ulta exclusives and Sephora exclusives. And I'm wondering how this is going to pan out now with so many brands being at both Sephora and Ulta. Because for a really long time, the only two brands that were really popular that was both at Sephora and Ulta. And again, this was a couple of years ago. And this is how you know when I say really popular. Was Too Faced and Tarte. And they used to have Ulta exclusives and Sephora exclusives. And now I feel like there are so many brands. And I'm wondering, are we going to see even more exclusives? Speaking of Tarte, Tarte released a couple of new products. I feel like right now these are only available at Tarte.com. I decided to not pick these up because I did pick up those Natasha Denona things instead. And I think that that bigger eyeshadow palette, it is called the Glamazon eyeshadow palette. I mean, it's cute, but it is one dark green matte and it's one dark blue shimmer and the rest are neutrals. And I'm like, I'm not going to let the pop of something fun lure me into this. And then there is a five pan palette that is a neutral five pan palette. But again, I said I opted for the Natasha Denona one instead because I much prefer the Natasha Denona quality over the um, Tarte quality. I don't know the price of this, but I don't think it's going to be. I wonder what that mini palette is going to be. If it's going to be close to the $27. Actually, let me go look. It is $29. I mean, I'm sure it's bigger pants. I'm sure you're getting more products, but who of us are running out of eyeshadow right now? So are you going to pay $2 more for the Tarte 5 pan or go with the Natasha Denona one? And for me, like I said, I prefer the Natasha Denona quality. So for me, that was an easy decision, but if you want more eyeshadow, I guess the Tarte one, but I just think that Natasha Nona quality is better. Another uh, thing that I think is going to be really hyped, and this is just me guessing, is the new Super Satin Lipsticks by Makeup by Mario. And I'm taking this guess based on the, everything that Makeup by Mario does becomes pretty hyped. And this is his satin lipstick. I do feel though, now that I think of it, that I don't think his matte lipsticks got the best reviews when I think back of it. I do like a nice satin lipstick, even though I feel like these seem a little bit more on the glossy satin side. I feel like I could try one of these. I could be persuaded, but I would like to pick up a shade in the store, I think. There are a couple of like, there's one that was like a little burnt orange. It was one like a little coral. And I could see myself getting something like that, like the lighter ones. Or maybe like a nude, there's an orangey red as well. And I want to see that in real life before I decide if that's the right for me. Because I feel like a lot of times when something is described as an orangey red, it is just a very bright light red with a hint of orange. And I want it to be more orange red than red with a little orange. So I want to see that one in real life. But if that one is a nice orange red, I think that might be the one. But I want to try one out. Have you seen any reviews of this one yet? It's $28. It's a bunch of sh 18 shades and it is available now. 
What do you think? Are you excited about this? What do you think is going to be the lip trend of this year? I mean, pH glosses and the click sticks were killing the game. I also lip oils in 2023. I think... What do I think? I think, honestly, a little bit more color. So I think, like, honestly, like, lip crayons could be on the comeback. I feel like that might be... Because like the squeezy tubes, do you remember the chubby sticks by Clinique, how popular those were? I'm just thinking the, the gloss tubes had a renaissance. Is it time for the chubby sticks to have a renaissance? Honestly? Maybe. This is probably also one of the things that I personally am the most excited about. And this is a sneak peek from Cleonod Cosmetics. And they were basically saying, Happy New Year. We're so excited to show you everything we have planned for 2024. Here is one sneak peek of what you can expect. If you are new to YouTube, if you are new to the makeup community, if you are new to the indie community, you look at this picture and you are clueless. But... If you have been here for a while, if you know where Cleona started, which is definitely not with the stained glass, the stained glass made them popular, made them pop off. But that's not where they started. The first palette that they ever created was the Paleo palette. The second palette that they created was the Archeo palette. And the Archeo palette, yours truly, was on the Unicarden with like makeup look suggestions. And I'm so excited to see them bring these back in a new palette form because the original palettes were hand painted. And I love the Cleonard eyeshadow quality, not only the stained glass, but the things that they did before as well. Beautiful quality, but they themselves admitted the reason they stopped doing matte shadows is because they weren't able to make the formula stable enough to scale. And it seems like they hopefully have mastered that. And I really, really hope that this is going to be a new take on the old palettes with mattes and shimmers because, oh, I really like these palettes. I like the color story. I like that all oh, the shimmers were so beautiful. So I am dying to see what this is going to be. And you can also see that at the bottom, there is a third palette. So I'm guessing they're bringing back the two old ones and they're making a newer one as well. So cannot wait cannot wait to see what this is i am so intrigued i'm so excited this is gonna be yeah this is the thing that like right now 2024 this is the thing that i'm the most excited about i cannot wait there have been some new cheek products that have come out as well that have released buxom have released some cream blushes i feel like this is about time buxom has just been pretty boring honestly the last couple of years their blushes was probably the last thing that really popped off for them and i feel like i feel like honestly they're a year and a half late to releasing them as cream blushes but at least like here they are it's five different shades 28 dollars. they're available now i will link them down below i don't know if i'm gonna try these out i could be convinced if i saw them in store but as of right now, I'm holding off. I feel the same about these from Bobbi Brown. These are the buildable, blendable formula with a silky touch finish, artist curated shades designed to mimic cheeks natural flush. I don't, as you can tell, I don't really go for natural or like no makeup makeup. So for me, I look at that orange and I'm like, oh, that looks really, really cute. But they are available now. These are powder blushes and I think they look cute. I think they look cute. Am I going to buy them? Again, probably not. If I see that orange, do I need another orange blush? No, I need an orange blush like I need a hole in my head. But at the same time, if there's something you really love, it's hard to stop buying it, you know? So I'm not going to say no because I might end up with that orange one. Sephora Collection has also released some new cheek products and they've released some new highlighters and some new contour shades. These contour shades are not for me. I do not, even though people are like, oh yeah, you're supposed to mimic a shadow with a cool toned contour. It looks like ghoul season on me. It looks like I'm supposed to be an extra on The Walking Dead. Halloween came early this year. Cool tones on the cheeks don't go with my undertone. It just doesn't look good on me. If I'm going to be contouring, I need to be preferably with something that's actually neutral but just up here i cannot bring it down again halloween came early i need to pick it up here so for me i would never buy a contour product like this because i've realized i don't like how it looks on me i don't that's 
just isn't for me but if you feel like every contour out there is too warm it really looks like these from sephora brand might be for you four different shades i don't know and then there's highlighters honestly sephora collection has good quality products the only thing i don't like about them is the packaging and i understand you have to skimp on something when you're you're doing products but i really wish that they would stop with those super flimsy plastic packagings maybe they've changed them for these they look a little different but $14 each, uh, again, it's something that I will look at when I'm in store. I'm not super drawn to buying it, mainly because I know that I've decluttered, I think, all of the cheek products from Sephora collection, either because I haven't loved them or because I haven't loved the packaging. I'm a packaging snob. I feel like I'm, like, dry under my nose. I have caught a little bit of a snivel since I came home. It's been really cold in Austin and I've been blowing my nose and I feel like I'm red and, like, scaly not ideal i am very excited to see maybelline release the superstay in a lumi matte foundation what does that mean luminous matte finish i'm so ready for this right now it's available in asia it's only in six light shades it's very typical for asia do i think it's right no but expect this to have a full range once it is launching in other countries i am excited to see this though usually when things like this is shown in asia a month later sometimes less than a month later it rolls out everywhere i will be trying this one i will be trying this one once it reaches here i am excited i used to really like the super stay um but i find it a little bit too full coverage for what i'm looking for right now i'm not looking for full coverage anymore even though i will say today it's probably the most full coverage that i will like go for but yeah this one i will be trying it so fun to see like some like new things coming to the drugstore and can i say you've probably noticed this as well but there are so many of these like gen c makeup brands tower 28 kosas a lot of these brands that are really popular right now that are available at sephora all their packaging is pastels iridescence pastels lavenders purples pinks all of that can i just say that it's so interesting to see that that circle is now back because that started at the drugstore and then it came to like the high-end brands at sephora and now the, the circle like the full circle moment with the purple caps back at maybelline again it's so funny to see that like not even brand packaging or branding itself is meant to be i don't know innovative or new anymore everybody just wants to fit in to the aesthetic or to the trends that are going on right now and it's going to be super interesting to see what the next next trend is because of course like pastel purple packaging it's not gonna and then like the the pistachio green packaging that's not gonna stay forever um it's interesting to see and it's also interesting to see the amount of brands that are willing to just give up their entire brand image just to jump on a trend just me okay oh this is also so exciting and i will a million trillion billion percent try this prada beauty is coming to sephora i am not surprised about this i feel like prada is such a popular brand that i am not surprised to see their beauty line come to sephora also prada actually does have their own essence they do have their own brand identity and i feel like their makeup launch was pretty well loved loved enough so that it sold out everywhere and the fun my foundation shade was sold out everywhere so i couldn't get a hold of it that's why i never tried the brand but i will definitely be jumping on it it's coming january 15th at sephora but i will link it down below you can already check out the selection over at sephora but I will a million percent try this out. Prada is one of my favorite fashion brands. It's super expensive though. So I only own like three or four pieces and it's because it's, ex it's expensive, 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 but I love their whole ethos. I love everything about how it looks. I just think they make the coolest, modern, but never boring, minimalistic, but never plain i just everything about it 10 out of 10 love it so i will be trying this and i feel like everything is coming to sephora yeah the matte lipsticks the soft matte lipsticks the eyeshadow palettes the foundation and the lip balm this girl oh i will be getting this mm. 
Oh, this is so exciting as well. I forgot to tell you, Deandra Nicole, which is an amazing creator over at Instagram. I absolutely love her stuff. She is making a collaboration palette with Bella Beauté Bar. I am so excited. And seeing this, that it's called the Ultraviolet, I'm not surprised. Deandra makes no secret about her love for purples. She loves purples for blushes, for lipsticks, for eyeshadows. I am not surprised at all. She always says that orange for her is the hardest eyeshadow to work with. And I'm like, because <laughs> I love oranges and I love yellows, but I'm just so excited to see what this is going to be. This is going to be a 15 pan palette. We've already seen the inside, like the inside is like just the pans, but I'm showing you the front here, but I'm telling you it's going to be a 15 pan eyeshadow palette. It's going to be one of those magnetic ones where you can move around the shadows. It's going to be the round pans. I love Bella Beauté Bar's fat formula. I'm so excited to see a purple palette in collaboration with Deandra and I cannot wait I cannot wait. It says it's coming mid-January. You can save some money with my code. Everything is going to be in the description box down below. I link everything. I put all my codes. And if you do shop through my links or my codes, I do earn a small commission. And thank you so much for supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot to me. But yeah, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to try this out. So super excited. So super excited beyond excited. There's also a new lip liquid lipstick formula from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and this is the Lip Velvet. It says it is a full coverage opaque color with hours of wear, and it is without the dryness or cracking. It's like a mousse-like uh, texture. I'm guessing these are going to be like the lip clays from Kaleidos. I feel like they really set the tone for what can be expected from a matte liquid lipstick with these, and I feel like a lot of brands have seen how loved those are and are trying to get that formula into makeup mainstream. The colors honestly look really pretty, but I don't need something like this in my life. I might as well just use my lip clays more because they're so good. This I'm also a little interested in. I don't think that this is available on the US market yet. And this is from Benefit. And this is the Dande Lion, like the animal lion. Rawr. Ooh, why did I do that? Ugh, forget you saw that. And this is for the Lunar New Year. And it is a blush and highlighter like cheek thing. Honestly, I think this looks beautiful. I wish this wasn't limited edition. I wish something like this would be available all the time. I don't know if you could purchase this, but honestly, I, where, where I am, I don't know if I can purchase this in the US, but it looks great. Looks beautiful. Another brand that is coming to Ulta Beauty is the more like the under brand or the more affordable brand to Halsey's About Face, which is AF94. And they're coming to Ulta and they're also coming out with some new products. It is some lip and cheek sticks, those little chubby ones at the bottom. There is the swirl marble eyeshadows, liquid eyeshadows. It is the cheek and lip glow that like wave thing let me hold the thought for that one hold hold your thought for that one and it is the lip stain the lip stains look beautiful it seems like versatile colors these are affordable they're coming soon and they're coming to ulta but hold that thought look at this one this is from essence this is the new chili vanilla collection i know that like we talk so much and not we i don't mean me you viewers talk so much about what private labeled is and i see viewers in every every indie makeup video that i do accusing brands that are not private labeled for being private labeled yet stuff like this the exact same component the exact same everything that's just gonna fly under the radar when it's so clear that they just went to the same manufacturer pointed at something and said i want this no just me? Private labeling just isn't what people think private labeling is. And a lot of things that are private labeled, people say are not. And a lot of things that aren't private labeled, people say are. I just wish that people would be a little bit more careful with the words. Maybe these are totally different things, but they do be looking very similar. It just looks like one of them said, like, let's throw a little bronzer in there. Why don't we? Um... I don't think I will be trying any of this out. It doesn't look like makeup for me. When is this being available? It's coming soon to the website. If you love Essence, you'll be able to pick this up soon. Okay, I've been filming for a really long time and there are some more things that I could be mentioning, but you know what? I'll save a couple of them for next week. If there's something that you were like, oh, I was really hoping you would talk about X, Y, C, let me know down below and I'll talk about it next week instead. This episode is just turning into be really, really long, but I feel like we need to talk about the elephant in the room and that is that Jacqueline Cosmetics has closed its doors. Who's surprised to raise a hand? No one? 
Gotcha. I feel like the writing has been on the wall for quite a long time with the whole Forma brands going into bankruptcy and then being, oh well, chapter 11 bankruptcy and being bought out by the people that they were having a debt with. Uh, all the paperwork has basically shown that Jacqueline Cosmetics um, might have been owned by her at one point, but for bigger parts of the journey with Jacqueline Cosmetics, which is never owned by Jacqueline Hill, she was just hired as the front person for the brand, basically. So I am not surprised to see the brand closing. I think that her as a spokesperson for a brand just isn't in the cards for her anymore because she doesn't have the reputation and maybe the ability to sell out a line the way that she could in 2016, 17, 18, maybe even 19. I don't remember when her lipsticks launched. I feel like that train has come and passed. And I think that she needs to work on herself and her image, maybe instead of a, a makeup line. And I think she calls her other brands as well. And I feel like I watched that video and she said that she didn't even want to be a brand owner. I honestly feel like that's pretty big to be able to admit that like, I thought that I wanted this, but I actually didn't. This wasn't for me to be able to like admit that like something isn't what you would like to do. I personally so far love being a brand owner. I love being able to decide everything. I love all the ins and outs and all of that, but also I'm having a very, very small brand compared to Jacqueline Cosmetics being available at all Ulta's, but the entire line has been 50% off on her website for a really long time. And I'm just not surprised. I'm just not surprised to see them close down. I just don't think that this was her passion anymore. I also think that she had to buy out the brand from former brand if she wanted to continue because former brand, the owner of the brand said that they didn't want to continue with Jacqueline Cosmetics. And I think she was offered to buy it and declined. Maybe she couldn't afford it. Maybe she didn't want to, honestly, which is totally fair totally fair maybe she was offered to buy it out and she's like listen i don't want to run this brand on my own and she opted not to which honestly again i think fair <laughs> totally fair biakling cosmetics had some really good products i really liked their lip pencils i thought their the the sheer coverage foundation was really good their finishing powder the glowy one was really nice they also had some awful products some of her like lipsticks were just not it that concealer was what nightmares were made of so i'm not surprised to see them go i know i said in my like what i thought of like my my predictions for this year for last year Again, Angie, we're in 2024. My predictions for 2023 was that I thought that we were going to see even more brands close. And I feel like there's been a couple of brands now by influencers like Item Beauty by Addison Rae and now Jaclyn Cosmetics by Jaclyn Hill that we're seeing the first influencer brands or celebrity brands close because that market is saturated. I say as someone who has an influencer brand as well, but I think also... If you are not passionate about it, if you are not filling a hole in the market, it's not for everyone. And who knows, it might not even be for Singe Beauty. I mean, the, the future will tell, but I don't think that this will be the last brand to close because there's just a lot of brands. It is a lot of brands and some of them are maybe not putting a mark on the beauty community um the way that others are and uh, it's always interesting to see which brands blow up and which ones do not and which when brands go up and then go down like a pancake so yeah i guess that's for the future to hold but i'm gonna scooch back to the to the middle i hope you're having an absolutely amazing friday do not forget to check the description box down below to see some more info about the things that i've been talking about thank you so much for all the kind words for all the christmas and new year's and holidays best wishes you've been so sweet to me thank you for giving me the grace to just literally disappear from the face of the planet for a couple of weeks and not just be active at all and nobody's been like i see sometimes some people like really be upset about like influencers or creators like how dare you take a vacation i need you here but it's like i needed some time off <laughs> So thank you for being so kind and so mature and so supportive. I feel very thrilled to be back. I will have a video on Monday again and I'm just happy to be back. New year, same bitch. Bye!